book of Matthew tonight, chapter 13, I want to continue talking about the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I began reading around about the 11th verse of that particular chapter, and Jesus here standing on the sea uh, that day, or got in a boat on the sea, and the people stood, and he sat down and taught them. As I said, most people came to the rabbis or teachers and stood over them or stood around them to hear truth. I'm told, and through my studies, that Jesus didn't just preach a short sermon. You notice he went through several parables, and he talked about several parables, and he just finished preaching at the mount. And so, in other words, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness is going to be filled. Amen. People that want the word don't look at their watch all day. Are y'all following me? They're not looking for an instant message. And, and, and that's the endurance that the church is lacking today. We want somebody to give us a quick word, quick fix, and, and we don't want to labor in the word. Jesus took his time, was very explicit. In other words, they went to school when they were around Jesus. It wasn't just a short class. Uh, y'all with me? They, they were in a university. They were there for, for hours. Listen, that's when he fed those 5,000 men, not including women and children, because they had followed him. They came and they stood all day and the evening had come. And Jesus said, I can't send them away hungry. I fed them spiritually. Now let me meet the natural need. How many know if you let God meet your spiritual need, he'll meet your natural need? Amen. If you know how to receive from heaven spiritually, if you open up your heart to God, then God would then turn around and meet the needs that you have naturally. When you seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, all other things will be added. Amen? Amen. So Jesus teaching here, and the multitude gather. He tells the first parable about the sower sowing the seed. Some fell by the wayside, and birds came and devoured them. Some fell in stony places and, and didn't have much earth, and they sprang up immediately because they had no depth. Uh, the sun... Uh, was upon them. They scorched them because they had no root and they withered. Some fell among thorns and thorns sprang up and choked them. Others fell on good ground, yielded up crops, some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. Amen. Verse 10 picks up right here. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? What was their question? Why do you speak to them in parables? Why give examples, similitudes? Why have hidden truth or wisdom here? Why are you talking to them in such a way or even condescending? It seems you're speaking down to them. They have enough sense to understand you. They, they're just like us. But Jesus said they don't want to understand. They ain't trying to hear. Everybody met somebody that's not really trying to hear? You know, or, or you know, they, 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 they play dumb or, or, or they're not really looking for the truth. They're looking for attention. Uh, so Jesus says to them, he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It's been given to you to know the what? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. So that's what I want to deal with tonight, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And God's expectation, Jesus saying his expectation is for you to do what? Know the mysteries. So verse 12 says, for whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance. Most people use this scripture and they always relate it to finances. Because that's always, when we're trying to overdo a point, I believe prosperity, but prosperity is not limited to finances. Prosperity means success in God. That's right. In whatever area. That means you ought to have good success. That means God's favor ought to be on whatever you do. So Jesus talking about here, to whom much is given, much is required. He's talking about here the knowledge of God. God has given us, according to Peter, everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge. Now, that equates to material things. It equates to physical things because Jesus says in Matthew 6, he says, your heavenly father already knows what you're in need of. But he said, you ought to seek first the kingdom. Am I not right? Amen. Of heaven, all of his righteousness and all other things will be at. But what's far most important to me, the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom, the things pertaining to the kingdom, the word of God. That's, that's why it's about this sower sowing, because what's most important to me is having the right conditions in my heart to receive from heaven. Are y'all following me? And when I say receive from heaven, most times we only receive from the man preaching to us. And if we get mad with the man, we can't receive. And it's not the man that's messed up, it's your heart that's messed up. Are you following me? The conditions have to always be right. Anybody receiving this tonight? If you understand me, say amen real loud so I know you're here. So a person that has an abundance of knowledge uh, or has some knowledge, he's going to be given in abundance. So you get smarter and smarter. You get wiser and wiser. You learn to be as wise as the serpent and as harmless as a dove. Are y'all with me? And so you got to know your adversary. Isn't that what the Bible always tells us? Know who your adversary. Know you got an adversary. But you got to resist them in the faith. 
Yes. Am I not right? You got to be steadfast in the Lord. Yes. And then after you suffer, God's going to establish you, perfect you, and settle you. Am I in the word tonight? Yes. And, and, and so he gives you abundance of more knowledge. Uh, we read in Peter where he said, add to your faith knowledge. Until your faith virtue. Y'all, y'all remember that? So don't just have faith in the Lord and be stupid. <laughs> faith is your confidence in God's word that what God said will come to pass. But you can't have confidence in what you don't know. Right. Are y'all following me? I'm not trying to insult you tonight, but we don't want to be ignorant. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to think that we got so much faith that we don't know the word. And that's what some of you operating on blind faith. Hello, faith, the Bible says, listen to me, I'm going to help you tonight with your faith. It works by love. So when you, you're, you're, you're not in love with the people of God and love with the word of God, your faith is short circuit. Faith working by love. I can't hate somebody and say I'm walking in faith. Therefore, for whatever I'm praying ain't being answered, ain't being heard, whatever I'm believing God for, I'm just out there hocus pocus. Are you following me? Because that's a lack of knowledge. Some of us think we operate in faith and I don't love him. And I don't like him. And I don't love this. No, 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 no. You short circuit in your faith. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Faith work is by love. God even so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes shall not perish. He loved the world. He loved this world, present, past, and future. He loved us. Anybody believe that tonight? Amen. And that's why you, some of you think you're so bad and so sinful and you're so tough. God can't. God loved that a hell out of you. Are y'all following me? Amen. You ain't done that much. God can't love you. Right. Well, that homosexual, he loved you. Right. And he loves the homosexual and he wants them delivered. Right. Y'all ain't have to shout me down tonight. Amen. And so even though you make it a contaminable sin and an and, 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 and unpardonable sin, you're scripturally incorrect. Any man and whosoever, y'all looking at me crazy, call upon the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I'm standing with the word. Amen. And if you call on the Lord, you shall be saved. That means you're saved. And it ain't based on how you feel about it. It's based on what God said about it. So it ain't based on what you've done. You ain't that bad and that terrible. God can't deliver you. But this is where our faith is not working because we're not growing in abundance of knowledge. Some of us getting ignorant and more ignorant or dumber and dumber. You know, but we're trying to act so spiritual. I said the other day to someone, you stop trying to be so deep and so spiritual. You're not above everybody. Right. And everybody ain't just illiterate and dumb and, 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 and hellish and you spiritual. Right. 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 We're too busy condemning. Right. Yeah. That sister ain't right. That brother ain't right. They didn't treat. They didn't speak. You better judge your own self so you don't have to be judged. Yeah. Let every man examine himself. This is wisdom. My job, wisdom and abundance of knowledge tell me I don't have enough time to walk around trying to fix you. Right. I, don't, I, can't, I ain't trying to be that busy trying to keep up with what y'all living. I got enough keeping up not only with the cares of the church, but my own care. For me to be running around trying to follow behind seeing if you living right and what you did and how your wife and you get along ain't none of my business. Knowledge tells me to study to be quiet and mind my own business and labor with my own hands. Talk that I know and testify that I have seen. And then it said, if it ain't edifying, it ain't worth talking about. Amen, Amen lights. Amen. That's where you get your faith working. You ought to be growing in abundance of truth. God has given you everything in life pertaining to life, and God needs to knowledge. This is what's hurting the body of Christ. This is what's hurting Christians. This is what's hurting us as church members. We are not getting wiser in the word. We're just getting nosier. Yes. <laughs> You think you have some super spirit so you can get in folk business. God ain't revealing my life to you. Amen. He don't trust you with my life. Amen. Well, that's what's done in secret. Gonna be you, you're trying to use the scripture in the wrong. What's done in secret in my life ain't revealed to you. <laughs> Are you following me? Amen. What you doing in secret and how you living, he's revealing and exposing you how this stuff affects in your own life. Not trying to be spiritual enough so you can have a magnifying glass in somebody else's heart. It doesn't work that way. The man that glorifies in iniquity of his own brother, God hates that. Paul said in Galatians 6, if your brother fall, your job is to lift him up. And teach every man how to bear his own burden. I love ministering to broken people. You didn't catch that. I love ministering to people that have a broken heart. After they come to a contrite spirit, I messed up. I said, I mean, I love pointing it up. I love building them up. I love giving them strength because they're ready now. Amen. The ground is right. Amen. Some of you that think you have arrived, your heart ain't right. You ain't ready. 
When you think you have a rise spiritually and you deeper than me and I know more than pastor and, and, and the real Greek word, you better get past the Greek and understand the English. You better be able to translate in the Holy Ghost and all you'll get and get understanding. Stop trying to go over Greek and Hebrew words or checking my language to see if I'm speaking good English. You better get this mumble jumble the best way you can. Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost that's teaching. I said it's the Holy Ghost that's your teacher. You need no man to teach you. You have an anointing. So if the man anointed is preaching to you, it's not the man taking any glory. It's the anointing that ought to get the glory. Come on, we read in Corinthians that Sunday, any man commending himself uh, uh, to himself is not wise. Anybody comparing themselves to themselves is not wise. Anybody glorying who that whatever man glory in, let him glory in the fact that he received it from the Lord. Amen. I don't care what kind of job you got. I don't care how you made it. You didn't pull yourself up by your bootstrap. You better thank somebody who gave you boots. That's right. <laughs> Hello. Amen. Your education, all of that. You are what we are. We all are by grace. This is how you grow in now. And the more you grow in grace, the more you humble yourself. And when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, I'm preaching tonight, he exalts you in due time. Whoever has to him, more will be given. That's why y'all been around here, some of you 15, 12, 13, 10 years. And you're like, Pastor, you're just growing and growing and growing. Because I don't care how much knowledge I think I have, I got to grow some more. Amen. I don't want to be in next year in the same place I am this year. All right. I don't want to look at the same scripture next year and don't have no more revelation than I had last year. Amen. I don't want to give you a stale testimony. Amen. I don't want to talk about victories or miracles that happened in our ministry 10 years ago. We need some new victory. Right. When signs and wonders are happening, that's when the church will grow. Yeah. That's why God allowing you to have some challenges. He wants to be glorified. That's what he said when Lazarus died. He stayed where he was four days. He said so the Father can be glorified. God knows what you're going through, but he wants the glory if we would just yield to him.